Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Sayyidi, how to rightfully write our last chapter in according with Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam? Based on all the teachings, alhamdulillah, that you know everybody has to be true to what they believe, what they want. Okay, I can't write your chapter, I have to write my own chapter. So everyone has to write the last chapter of their life, what is it that you want? Not everybody wants to to reach what I want to reach, so uh, this is something personal. Based on what you've learned and what you understood from the teachings, what is it that you want to accomplish? Then you write that chapter of your life, I want to reach this, I want to reach that reality, I want to be in this presence, I want to be in that presence. Or some may say, I just want to come for a good meal and enjoy myself, thank you very much and they write that chapter. So everyone has a, a unique chapter that they have to write and what they, they feel that their potential and what they're capable of, of reaching of their potential and then that will be what keeps them on their course. If you don't write the last chapter then life can become very chaotic. Because you don't know what that course was, where were you supposed to end up and are you doing what's necessary now to end at that goal. So it keeps us in a direction like putting in the coordinates of a GPS. You put it in then you know your destination and every time you take a wrong turn that GPS keeps saying, no, no, make left, make left to go back onto your course. And that's the importance and that's you know that's even from that technology is, is teaching mankind that keep on your course, you know put your coordinates in and then keep with on that course. Shaitan's role is to take us off our course, take us off our orientation and, and disorient people and reorient them in the way of Jahannam and the way of the hells and, and the way of punishment towards mankind and uh, guidance and those whom are guiding and all the degrees of guidance is to take people towards their heavenly course. And that's why then the degrees of guidance, so the material guidance or the level of guidance that's just only from dunya, alhamdulillah tells people, you know, keep your course towards the heavens. But then the heavenly guides, their coordinates and their teachings are so different that when people listen to… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To that, they say, oh, I'm just coming to Islam, okay, great, but I should be achieving, you know, these realities in the world of light and the presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad You can see that the goal is so much more higher, the reality is so, so, so much more different, more intense, more, more described, more detailed and that's, you know, God's blessing. That guidance is an immense blessing. You know from minor guidance which there is no minor guidance to very high level guidance is all of Allah's immense gift towards His creation inshaAllah. Ramadan is a good month to do that because the devil within you when you're fasting is chained so that you can make a much more clear writing. We said that people are more generous in Ramadan, people are more in, intuitive in Ramadan, people are, are more inquisitive, studying, reading, watching. We see the, the stats on the videos that they watch longer, more people are, are watching more often. So because the, the internal devil that's 
change because of the fasting and the good deed, then that's a time and an opportunity that when your devil is chained, write what your objective is. Because as soon as Ramadan ends the devil will throw you back into the basement and it become harder to, to hear from your true reality and, and the desire of the true reality, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How can we build a relationship with children if it is currently not based on so much love? Immediately reintroduce love, that build the kinship, build the a love, build the respect, build the a bond. But after a certain age it becomes more difficult because that, that bond won't be there. And that's why the Islamic parenting is, is, is complete, completely something different. That's the importance of recognizing Western parenting is satanic. And people say, Shaykh that's not fair, it's over generalizing but we're not talking about individual families and individual Western people but Western medicine and Western sciences is goal was very satanic. So to, to break the bond of children and parent, to, to make the familiar bond to be broken so that later it could be indoctrinated within the schools because if you break the bond of parenting then you break the bond of the child with listening to the family, the father, the mother. And then they go into school thinking the school has an interest in them, cares for them, psychiatry of school will help them and incorrect because the school's only interest is to reorient people towards Jahannam. You take a heavenly orientation, they enter the school and every day it's being like flipped in different directions to point towards uh, hell and that's literal. So that's, that's the danger. Now everyone then has a responsibility to go back and, and understand the madad. And that's why the importance of those talks was based on madad. So madad is not something through your mind, you say, Ay Shaykh I can't even connect, I don't know what to connect. I'm like, well most likely you're really not doing it through love. You're trying to scientifically think, I'm going to connect and there's going to be some sort of magnetic happening. So no, it's based on love that when you have a yearning to reach the heavens, then you hear somebody talking about the heavens, your heart becomes filled with a love and your heart comes to tears based on how much you're yearning for heavens. If you're not really yearning for heavens and you're trying to convince your mind to connect your heart, not going to happen, it doesn't happen. So people say, I can't connect, I can't connect because you lack love. You're trying to connect through your aqal in your mind like, oh it's a magnet, I'm a magnet, we're go, oh, I don't feel connected, I don't feel connected. What are you talking about? You love your children, do you have to sit in your room and think about how I'm going to love the child? It comes by nature in most people, 90% of people, again this is the norm and there's abnorm where the, that's something different but the norm of society, God gives you this creature and you love it. You don't even have to think about it and then you go out and work hard to feed it, to clothe it, to take care of it, to protect it, that's madad. And as a result that child feels that love and their soul is always with you. But then as soon as you become an adult you wonder and say, what is madad? What is that? And then shaykh, I'm, I'm trying, I don't feel anything because you lack love. Because if you love the person and you said, oh this, this system, this teaching, this shaykh is drawing me near to Allah and it's Allah whom I love. So of course then I have a love and it's Prophet whom I love and of course I have a love. And as soon as they broadcast my heart is yearning to be in that presence and to hear from that reality. So madad is love, when you can't connect you're going through your head and not your heart. And when your heart is subtle it's like a radar picking up from the heavens. 
it feels the connection, it's drawing near to that connection and every word for it is a, is a food. So interesting that sometimes when we talk we can see people look like they're bored, they're distracted, they're out. Why? Don't you want to get and receive the emanations from heavens? If not then what are you doing there? That you have to ask your own intention because it's a food source. The words come with an energy, the energy is from a heavenly signal. So when you have that yearning and then when somebody's distracted and things, the talk was the point in which a, a, a gate of energy begins to open and you're being addressed from heavenly stations. And when you're distracted and just all over the place something's wrong. Because it's like a medical office, they can diagnose every action. So the state of yearning is that when you're so hungry for the reality, you're so in love with the heavens that you want the isharat of Prophet you're waiting for it. Whether you come into a video, a short clip or even just the broadcast three days a week, all our lives we were waiting for that channel to open. As soon as it opened the fires was flowing through and that reality but that's based on every person's love. When you have this immense love, so they would watch in these movies that this person you love would go away and like months they would be away and people would wait for a letter, right? Your loved one went away and they would wait for one letter, the letter would come Everybody would come into the room, open this letter, the fragrance, the energy, just the atmosphere of the letter then they would begin to read it and everybody in the room would start to cry and feel emotions because they were yearning to hear from that soul. But that yearning should be in each person and to their own individual reality from the heavens. So then we can judge that we're really in it, we're not really in it, maybe we're there for some other reason. And that's, that's when every person has to be true to themselves. When they're true to themselves they're, they're yearning for the understanding, they're yearning for the communication and like pearls and corals you'll take from the talk and those whom their vibration is higher they're taking deeper realities for, their, for, their, for themselves. Because it comes loaded, these are fulukul mashhoon, these are loaded ships that come with many precious gems that what people hear and what they don't hear are encrypted packages within that. They found that now in dunya that you can send a message out, within that message are encrypted packets of information. So you could technically download a file that look like one thing but could have thousands of, thousands of encrypted sort of messages in that. But the heavens is much more intense, every talk that's coming out is, is encrypted with information for the soul but they have to be wanting, waiting and they have to have that sort of awareness that they're sitting waiting and with their pen, with their heart they're trying to absorb it. They don't look like they're bored from it. Because then that means something's off in the heart of that person. So these are all things that people can judge themselves of where they are and where they're not. So when they… it's a doctor's office, so when you email that I can't make the connection well immediately then there's something deficient in the love. That you have to have a love for Allah you have a love for Prophet otherwise this connection means nothing if you're trying to do through your head and like a science and, and imagine yourself you're like a magnet, you're not a piece of metal. This has to be through your heart that I have this yearning and love for Prophet his name becomes mentioned I feel like crying. So as soon as I'm meditating oh I'm, I'm feeling that presence and nearness and that's my way of approaching. That's why you read in the nasheed the camel is crying on the way to Prophet and that the camel would cry and, and run faster as he's getting closer to Medina, if naqatullah and the camel can cry 
then what can a human doesn't cry for the love of being in Allah's presence and the love of being in the presence of Prophet and out of seven to eight billion people on earth, how many Allah gave this opportunity to reach that love? That's why He said the gift was the tariqah and what did you do with that gift? How did you show Allah you were happy with it, you loved it, you cherished it, you nurtured it and that you reached to what you were supposed to reach, inshaAllah. That's why they said that the closer you draw to the shaykh the more dangerous it is for you. Those whom sitting in their home they're a little bit safer because the nazar of these awliya are on them, what they do, how they interact, how they hold them, conduct themselves in these associations. But the ones directly under the vision of the shaykh they're far more dangerous in far more danger of bad manners. So when the shaykh can directly look into the room and see how you conduct yourself as soon as they're talking then you're under different criteria. So it's like being in Mecca, it's called haramain. If you pickpocket somebody in your home that's one sin. But if you go to the haram and you pickpocket somebody it's a million times more sinful. So that's why Shaykh Daghestani saw but if you moved he threw his siwak at you. Because there has to be an ihtiram, there has to be a, a complete connection because you're trying to receive the fires and the energy. The fires of the talks and the questions are the same because the amount of energy that coming through the questions and the answers they're all the same. So some people they act differently when it's a talk and then as soon as it become question and answers they're sitting like it's an observation time. No, no, it's the same talk because the same realities are all coming out whether the people are asking questions because then it addresses a, a collective question. Means there are thousands of people with the same question that Allah has called them into that presence and inspired one of them to ask so that all of them could be addressed. Because whomever called you to listen tonight is the same one inspiring to speak tonight. And then the recipient's responsibility is the level of respect in which they receive the information, it shows you their sincerity. When they're moving around and they're forgetting and feel like they're distracted, fixing their hair, fixing their turban, moving all over the place means they're distracted, something's wrong in their connection. That's a, you know this is the way, the way is adab yahu to keep your adab so that you can grow and that you can reach to what you have to reach inshaAllah. As alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah As our hearts become softer how do we handle our emotions and sensitivity to other people's feelings? How can we prevent ourselves from feeling overly sensitive? You don't have to. Allah describes your Lord is in a tajalli at every moment. A tajalli of crying, happiness, sadness can affect the, the heart of the student. The more subtle <coughs> the heart, when the heart is more latif then based on the emanations and vibrations Allah plays their heart like a violin. Is one note is high, one note is sad, one note is tough, one note is loving. The more subtle the heart is, the heart becomes firm then the emotions become less. But the subtlety of the heart is what's important. That has a khashiya, has a like it been completely sort of crushed down and subtle so that it can feel the vibrations. When the vibrations are coming with happiness it feels an immense happiness, when it comes with sadness they feel immense sadness, when it becomes a, a, a ocean of awareness they feel an immense awareness. Because of the subtlety of the vibration it picks up and begins to flow with that. So it's not necessary to harden one's heart and that's why Prophet described that, cry more, laugh less.
because laughing makes the heart to be hard. Crying makes your heart to be soft. So people think that it's macho but that's satanic macho that they want to build themselves like a buffalo lifting metal and then have a character like a buffalo. But the uh, Rijalullah, the men of Allah they don't need to lift metal to have their strength, their strength is in Allah And that the softness in their heart, the Prophet was fierce in battle and then would go home and be loving father and uh, loving messenger for the community. And they would cry in sobats and, and zikrs and in talks and fierce in the battlefield. And this was the perfection of the khuluq and character. When necessary to be tough is tough, when it's necessary to be loving they're capable of that. And that's what the, is important in the heart, that the, the machismo and, and these are not relevant, that they are strong in the way of Allah and upholding what Allah wants. But to keep the softness in character, to, to listen to the sadness and to open your heart with sadness when you hear the talks and visualize yourself in these talks of difficulty and see yourself that oppression is everywhere and all these horrific things are coming. When you see the events on TV of people being beaten in their masjids and in difficulties, always think to ourselves that I'm sitting at home and they're going to come one day trying to beat me. And who will you call to for Allah to help? And that becomes a training, oh I'm going to call upon Rijalullah, I'm going to call upon Prophet and And from nowhere support can come and all our lives are like that. We were sent to Wahhabi conferences where many Wahhabis would come to attack and we would keep making salawats and doing what we had to do and out of nowhere one of such events they all came around like they were going to punch me or hit me. We kept making our salawats, handing the flyer, Allah sent a servant, must have been 6'5 and 300 pounds just from behind me, came right in front of all these people and scared them like he's going to cut their heads off and I don't even know who that person was. They all dispersed and he vanished. He didn't come up to me, he didn't say, hi how are you, I like you very much. He just from nowhere Allah sent this huge individual. And these people dispersed and we took it as shahada to we'll we stop. They had a big conference and we were handing salawats out to people <laughs> and they were becoming agitated. This is, this is, uh, that was a sign that Allah said, the support now it's time for us to leave. And many of the stories of our awliya that they would try to imprison the shaykhs because they just didn't like the tariqah and the Russians didn't like the tariqahs. They would imprison them and they would see Fajr time the shaykh is outside walking around the gardens doing his zikr. And whom Allah supports, these people have no hand in it. So to reach, the servant has to reach to the level that Allah is happy with them, Prophet is happy with them. And like a fireman your whole being is prepared is always to ask for the madad and support of Rijalullah. At the beginning of every, every association they call the madad of Rijalullah that these, these great souls and pious souls that your nazar always be upon me. If I'm doing something wrong and inappropriate inspire my heart towards goodness. And if I'm doing something good that your fires and your blessings to be reaching to me. So that's a, a way of life. And in one such case they took Shaykh Sharafuddin and they, no they took the student of Mawlana Sharafuddin and they were trying to imprison him and do something wrong and then Mawlana Sharafuddin made a meeting to come to talk to the head of that prison. And as soon as he walked into the room because the prisoner were, they were going to do something very bad with his student. As soon as they walked into the room the director of that uh, organization came crawling in the presence of Mawlana Sharafuddin and he said, I want you to release that student of mine, they didn't do what you said you, you, you're claiming he did and release him to our custody back because the Russians were always bothering the, the tariqahs in Dagestan. And then he took the student and went back and his people 
They said, well, what happened? I thought you were going to you know, give it to him and say something to him. He said, you don't know. When he walked into this room there was a dragon and lion in front of him and the dragon said, I'm going to rip your head off if you say anything else. He said, you didn't see all that? And the people said, no, we didn't see anything. And then he said, okay. And these are serious people, they have a, a support from Allah they don't need any weapons, they don't need a, a sword or nothing, all they need is a pen because the pen is mightier, they write knowledges. With those knowledges is the fuel and the energy of their entire being because you don't know at what point you heard what talk, what reality and you go back and you meditate on it. So your, your greatest weapon is your pen. But if you didn't write anything then when it comes to a difficulty that comes to you, you say, what did he say? What was it? Well, I don't remember. You ask the next person next to you, become a telephone tag. What did he say? He said it was about three about bananas and, and fruits. He said, he didn't say anything about bananas, what was it about this? Because people start to make up what they heard. But you know when you're, when you're a depository of information and you wrote all your life all these realities. These realities are now deposited upon you, we are the inheritor of our shaykhs and their knowledges are deposited and as a result when they want to activate those knowledges and its realities you don't know at what time the importance of that activation. But the tariqah history is deep within that. Even within Shaykh Daghestani talked about how he was sent into the the line of when I think Syria and, and, and France were fighting and the French were invading those regions. And a story about a ta'weez and that he, he believed so much in his ta'weez, the person came and he said, uh, my ta'weez that my shaykh gave me protects me. He said, that's not going to protect you. He said, shoot. The man shot at him and nothing happened. And he was astonished that what happened, I shot at you nothing happened. He said, I told you no I have a ta'weez and my shaykh gave it to me. Means that the level of faith was such that nothing will come to them because they're with Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad But we have to reach to that faith, we have to act like we have that faith. So that's why everything is the adab. When you lack the adab you show a sickness that becomes apparent. That's the you know go to a medical office and you got boils and blisters on you, the doctor knows there's something wrong inside of you. For us it's the observation, the shaykhs are observing. When they don't see the mannerisms then there's something wrong. When they see the mannerisms, the level of belief, the level of uh, ihtiram that they're, they're absorbing these knowledges and these realities at every moment. As soon as that microphone goes off the one from the heavens is addressing the audience and you want to be a recipi recipient and depository of that. You want the one to be, I want those knowledges deposited to me and to my soul so that when Allah want to activate the knowledges they're there. They're burned into the reality of the soul, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, can we use the asa for grounding while sitting for meditation instead of the hands on the ground? Thank you immensely. I would think it's difficult when you're sitting on the ground to hold the asa like that. But yeah, if it works for you no problem. But the hand is something that is already a natural position that when you have your hand on the ground and you're sitting on the ground and connecting, the unnatural position is trying to now balance this because then now your whole focus is going to be, this is going to hit you in the head because it's just moving around. So don't do anything that keeps you to be present in your physical form. So when you train yourself you will be in a natural state and like you're leaving your body and you're parking it and it's not demanding anything from you. That's why you don't have to meditate going like this because how could you leave your body when your finger is going you know continuously moving, now you're present. And also when you're doing your breathing and you're reciting with all your mouth moving 
Now you're present because you have to have the energy to move those. So you want to reach a state in which your meditation as if you perked your physicality and you're now free with your energy. If that level of meditation that you want to achieve then best to make it as something sort of uh, comfortable. If you're going to meditate in a chair and you just want to hold the cane and you're meditating because your knees are bad or you're a bit older then you can keep the cane and again meditate and connect and make your tafakkur and take the presence and bring your soul out of the body inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Is it safe to do our practices and madad when we have to stay for a few days in a home where we know the lady of the house does black magic? No. You do your madad but you don't open your energy. So you do the madad and keep yourself continuously connected with the shaykh. And just uh, for your protection against difficulty and I, I wouldn't stay anywhere where you know somebody does magic because you're eating from that, drinking from that and if their magic is strong then they know your, your level of energy and connection and they become inspired to give food and drink that would harm that connection. So best to try to keep and avoid these types of uh, difficulties. If not then just keeping your madad and make sure that you're connected at night with the shaykh and that protect me. Uh, read Ila Sharaf and Nabi the du'as that we have over anything you drink and anything you eat and uh, take care, be careful inshaAllah. Be careful also we get emails <clears throat> where people are talking about energy and I feel this energy, I feel my energy in my teeth, I feel my energy in my mouth. I feel... When we talk on these subjects these are subtle realities and be careful that you don't have underlying mental issues in which you hear these talks and you start to exaggerate everything. So the state of energy awareness is a lot of training. Well you trained really hard, you made a connection, you feel energies, you feel you know negative vibrations and that's a given, you're comfortable with it, there's negativity everywhere, why is you're not walking in paradise. So it's a given, it's a subtle understanding with a strong connection. But as soon as you think you hear something and now apply it to everything, make sure you don't have an underlying mental condition in which you mentally already hallucinating and thinking all sorts of you know things that uh, through your mind and this and this and this and then it's, oh yeah now I feel this, I feel that. So that, that it may resonate with a lot of people who have sort of underlying mental issues. And they have to seek medication for that, they have to seek you know medical sort of uh, doctors for that, medical treatment for that. These states that we talk about of energy they're very subtle states based on people's trainings. So when the training is strong they have a strong connection, based on their connection they have strong faith. So they're not disturbed by feeling energies because they have strong faith. They understand that you're going to go places, some are going to be hot, some things going to be cold and that's life. They're, they're in submission to Allah's will. But when you start getting emails, I feel this, I feel this, I feel this all over, I feel all over the place, uh, then yeah that you didn't achieve that, that's just you not going into psychosis. Thinking that, oh now you understood and uh, yeah that, well, everything is this like this, everyone's out to get me, everyone's yeah. So those, those things you have to be very careful of, anyone feels like that you have to get medical attention. If you have anxiety over everything you have to get medical attention, you need medicine for anxiety. It's not the 
continuous emails coming in every five minutes about this, 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 no that you have anxiety because this training is based on making a very strong connection and in that strong connection they don't talk like that because the connection is strong, right? Allah's with them, Prophet is with them, the shaykh is with them, they don't need to communicate every five minutes something going wrong, something's like this, something like that, something like that. So that, that you would understand those are high level faith people. Everyone else seems to be very anxious, needs medication for it, they have paranoia and all these other mental issues. So it's not going to be resolved by meditation and, and every five minutes you know firing off emails to help me based on these conditions where it clearly it looks like you need medical help and medication. Not a bad thing because everyone needs some medication, your heart goes up, your heart rate goes up. You need medication, you have diabetes, you need medication. Allah gives everyone a handicap in which to operate so that you're not at a hundred percent, you always have a deficiency and a test in life and that you complete the test and do your practices so that you can reach towards perfection but nobody's perfect, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Sayyidi, you mentioned the four doors of Ramadan or four powers, power nights to be the 9th, 18th, 27th and please forgive my bad other. what was the fourth one? Hiya, 29th. The <coughs> four times Allah mentions in Laylat al-Qadr Zannafu Laylat al-Qadr wa madaraka Laylat al-Qadr, Laylat al-Qadr khayru min arfi shahar Tanazal malaykati wa ruh bi idni rabbim kulinam salamun hiya is the secret of the 29th night of Ramadan inshaAllah. And these are the power of every month super activated, supercharged in Ramadan because Allah is, is, is asking the nation fast. Because of their state of fasting Allah will dress gifts that they could not have achieved because they don't have those practices. But the one whom is in continuous training of tafakkur and making the, the connection, the rabita and the connection to the heart of Prophet then every month they're in these tajallis. We said before in other teachings every month has a tajalli just from the huruf. The first day of the month is the alif, not according to abjad but according to the regular sort of uh, alphabet arrangement. So the first day has uh, all the way to alif, the last day of the month has the ya so that it culminates all the knowledges in that month. So every month, every day has a tajalli, first 15 days are called white days. Because that as the month is opening and the qamar is sending out lights then after the 15th the moon phase is dying and that's a different light, those are the dark nights. So everything has a tajalli, everything has a reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah for a clarification, does applying fragrances to yourself also protect you from negative energies? Applying fragrances to yourself protect you from negative energies, inshaAllah, again to every limit that the question you know for has a different understanding for women it's not a protection and they're not to be applying fragrances because then they attract the hawa and desires of the opposite sex. So Prophet discouraged that unless it's in the home for the, for the spouse. For men then the ouds and the fragrances that were not appealing to 
the nefarious races of energy then those are a strong protection and again within an understanding not so that it's so strong that everyone smells the person. Wherever they walk is just a, like a, a very strong fragrance. So it has its benefit of, of pushing away negative energies in the Sunnah of Prophet and through the fragrance in salah that if you're going to pray and meditate then you fragrance yourself because of the angelic reality of aroma that smell and fragrance has to do with the angelic state. But that has to do with the natural fragrance not the synthetic fragrance. Natural fragrance is that which in the heart has a yearning. So everyone has a natural fragrance, what, what do they call in English your natural smell? What's the word for it? But whatever it is you have a natural odour that emanates from the pores of your body. In your spirituality when the spirituality becomes stronger and the heart becomes cleaner this fragrance is important because when your heart enters into its yearning state that way we talked at the beginning of the night is that you have such an ishq and love. And when there's a yearning means there either is a, a danger, a need, a, a yearning to be in that presence the heart immediately becomes lit because these are lit people, they're heated. As soon as they begin to make their munajat and their du'a and their, and their meditation their natural fragrance hits the heart and they begin to release immense fragrances. That fragrance is the secret of the shaykh's du'a being accepted. So the du'a by tongue is, is more for entertainment of people. But the du'a of the heart by its natural fragrance is that the angels come, they take that fragrance and immediately lift it into Divinely Presence because it's encoded and encrypted because that's only released by these individuals whom their heart produces beautific pheromones. That's the natural word was pheromones. So you produce a fragrance, that same pheromone is what the child can smell with its mother and its parents. That same pheromone is the animal kingdom, you know thousand penguins that look the same but the child smells and has the unique smell of its mother and is directed towards its parent. So mean Allah gave us this entire factory and reality within ourselves. So we use the fragrance and perfumes to imitate that reality and to hide the dirtiness of dunya. So we perfume and put these atars and they, they give a beautific feeling and aromatherapy, bring back angelic states. So for women it's in privacy. So they don't go out in that state and they're going to be sitting and meditating for their home, they want the home to be a beautific fragrance, they put upon themselves a beautific fragrance so that it brings about a, a hal for themselves and for their meditation and their prayers. For the men then the stronger fragrances that are used for protection so that to take away nefarious beings that don't, they can't breathe, their whole energy is based on inhaling. So when you have a, a, an inhalant that is toxic to them, it's like somebody putting poison gas around you, you can't breathe there. For them this is the equivalent, that's why Prophet preferred the ouds. So when they put the ouds, these nefarious beings whom their pleasure is, is vile and foul smells, it chokes them. They have to move away from that. So sometimes you may get somebody whom is, is, is it has a lot of those types of energies around them and they're very angered by these smells. They may come up to you and tell you, please I can't stand the smell that you're because the things around them can't take that. And that's the same concept with Isfan. So Isfan is, a, is like a flower from paradise that Allah brought down to this earth. 
So the wild roof seed and as soon as you burn it in a slight way means that the fire hits it with a soft heat, warm heat, it releases a strong fragrance that's angelic from paradise but for this earth it's… it stops the breathing, they're not capable of inhaling its, its smoke or fragrance the nefarious creatures. They begin to like a… like a poison gas for them. As soon as they smell that they can't breathe, they all start to evacuate and leave the space. That's how it's working when people don't understand, oh why is I going like this? No, because they they su sustain themselves on their breath. So imagine that you're breathing and all of a sudden somebody put you under water, you can't breathe at that time. For them it's like a state that somebody threw them under water they can't breathe. So these fragrances have a power over them. So when you want to clear out a space you put the isfand and move it around the house with the charcoal or keeping it lit and uh, take away bad energy, negative energy, evil eye and all of these realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is it possible to unknowingly betray the shaykh? Sure, because people who willingly betray the shaykh then they're in big trouble. But the not knowing or unknowingly because they lack a adab, that means that the loyalty and the loyalty will always be tested. So we gave in many examples, we were going on a tour with the shaykhs and they were going into maqams and one day we went to a maqam and came out and the shaykh talked to me, Mawlana talked to me, he said, why do you keep betraying me? Oh, I was devastated by that comment. I said, Sayyidah I'm lost, I went to the maqam to pray. He said, but how you could go to my shaykh and pray when I didn't go there first? Who are you? So I thought this was just a good act. He said, but in our way everything is manners that I'll go to see the shaykh and you stand behind me so that you know your rank. So we understood very quick and that was fortunate to say because he would never say anything. But the fact that he taught me so that I would stop it means don't, don't outdo yourself, don't go somewhere you don't need to go, don't ask something you don't need to ask. When you're with the shaykh keep your mouth silent. As soon as you see another shaykh you want to keep talking, asking, you broke all your bonds with the shaykh. So even the subtlety of going to a maqam and praying before he had entered in to pray, as a result of being trained with that then when the grand shaykh came for a big tour in Uzbekistan, everybody was going to go run into every maqam and sit there making du'as until the shaykh would come because he was coming at a later speed. Then these caravans, the buses were going f much more ahead. But alhamdulillah because of that training we had the ability to tell everybody, don't you dare step into that maqam until the Grand Shaykh steps in. And then everybody was then waiting, 300 people outside every maqam standing until Mawlana Shaykh would enter in, give his salams and everybody would rush in behind. So there was a reason to disclose that for a later date that you could convey that to people because people don't know. And that's the purpose of tariqah is to tell people and tell each other, what I learned from the shaykh was do like this, from the shaykh don't do like that. And that's the purpose of the brotherhood and sisterhood is to tell people, encourage people to be of service. Don't ever tell people, no, 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 I'll do it. No, no, don't tell anybody, you do it. Tell everybody, yeah sure inshaAllah come, come help, everybody help. When somebody's doing something wrong then we encourage them that uh, to understand the shaykh doesn't do like that, the shaykh does like this. So that's when your loyalty is to be tested so that you have a shaykh, your answers are already given, your guidance is already given. When you see another shaykh it's, alhamdulillah you take the fires and the blessings. As soon as you open a dialogue and start talking, you're saying that you don't have any guidance Then, as a result, I'm going to start guiding you. Now you're in a difficulty because you just received guidance from a different shaykh. How do you then 
balance yourself. You're going to disobey your existing shaykh or you're going to disobey that shaykh that you just asked. So the adab is, you know, you have a shaykh, you have a commitment, you're loyal to that commitment, then keep silent and keep by the presence of your shaykh and until your shaykh enters somewhere don't go, keep to the presence of your shaykh. So it, the tariqah is a very subtle reality and don't imitate the shaykh, don't post his name as if you're his name, we said that before. You can post the organizations Muhammadan Way, SMC, anything beautific about Sayyidina Muhammad and then govern yourself with the best of manners. Don't post something good and then something bad and then something from other organizations with all these uh, profile images because then it makes it seem like we're supporting those organizations. So yeah, everything is very subtle that I'm going to make a channel based on the Muhammadan way or SMC way or whatever we're going to use but I'm only going to put my shaykh's teachings there because I'm not going to put you know silver and gold together, copper and gold together. I'm going to take these teachings and propagate this shaykh's teachings. If you want make another channel that doesn't have anything and you can do it anything you want with a different name. So you're being… you're asking yourself to be an ambassador for the shaykh. So then conduct yourself as an ambassador and not confusing people because people start to follow based on, oh I, I like the shaykh's teachings and then you throw in three other shaykh's stuff and they're like, what? Is, does he support that? You made now fit now. So yeah, everything is based on you know having aqal, common sense and, and to do everything with sincerity and that to understand that it's all about showing my loyalty to the shaykh. My life is to propagate my shaykh's teaching and then one day you, you become responsible to propagate the love of Sayyidina Muhammad You don't then include anything else, you, you have a channel and says, oh Muhammadan realities and you start talking about Buddha. Prophet will be angry with you, why are you doing that? So same thing, same adab you would have learned in life that you propagate your shaykh and his teachings only. And he'll stand by his teachings if you have any problems. But you start throwing in other people's teachings and this person, that person, this quote of this person, that person, then it became like a, a soup of a mixture of things nobody understands what it is inshaAllah. InshaAllah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen illa shafa nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sahbihi kiram wa lam shaykhina fi tarifat nashbadiyyat al aliyya wa sa'ir wa sadatina wa siddiqeen an fatiha. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.